Hello guys, how's it going? Jackson Roger here one more time and today I'll interview one of the greatest specialists, naturalist, wildlife biologist, Sir John Beaumont. John, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Nice. In today's video, guys, we're going to talk about wildlife, wildlife biologist, this profession that is so rich and important for our planet. In this video, I'm going to ask him some questions related to this profession because wildlife, nature is so important for this planet, all right? For our lives as human beings. So I'll ask him some questions, very important questions, and I know that you will learn a lot, me here as well. So please pay attention. Sir John Beaumont, so now the first question. Please tell me about yourself and about your career. I always wanted to work with animals. Uh, when I became older, that focus changed to wanting to work probably with wild animals if I possibly could. Mm, nice. But I knew I wanted to work with animals. Then I was told by the lecturers. In British English, we don't say professors, we say lecturers. Lecturers. Right. So, um, I spoke to my lecturers and they said, look, if you're serious about working with animals, you need a master's degree. So I applied around universities, mm. got a master's degree. And at the same time, people were telling me, you also need experience. Mm. So I used to attend meetings at the local zoo. Mm. And I met somebody who said, you need experience while you're at university? Well, why don't you go to Africa? There's oh, lots of projects in Africa. Such a great go there. playground. So I went to this great playground that was Africa. And I went, actually, it was an island off the coast of Madagascar. Oh. Madagascar being the biggest island in the world. Yes. And Madagascar itself is off the east coast of Africa. Gosh. So I went to Mauritius for a year near Madagascar. Came back to England with this experience of working on an endangered species conservation project. The project in Africa was working with the world's most endangered bird. Holy. And it was a bird of prey, a falcon, mm. like a hawk. And I was surrounded by people who were all uh, British or American scientists. And I was only 18. So it had a tremendous impact on me. I came back to England, did my degree, then traveled to Israel to join another project, mm. second project, to gain more experience. In Israel, I was working on my great tree, great tree. birds of prey. So oh. birds of prey that were going from the north, northern part of the world to the southern part of the world, from the northern hemisphere oh. to the southern hemisphere, thousands of miles. Interesting. When I finished that project in Israel, I returned again to England, completed my master's degree. Nice. For my master's degree, I went to a third country. I went to Malaysia. And I studied the effects of deforestation on birds. Finishing that project, I returned to Britain. Nice. So then I finished at university and I got a desk job. Great. And then I did the desk job for two years, not related to animals at all. Mm -hmm. But that was in Manchester. After two years doing that job in England, I came to Brazil to have a look around and I decided it was so full of biodiversity, birds, mammals, insects, wildlife, jaguars. I thought, this place is fantastic. And, and I like the sun. And I like the beer. And I'm going to move. Nice. So I moved. And that was two years later. I spent 16 years in Brazil and I set up a conservation project for birds of prey. Oh. I funded it by teaching English, which is how we met. Great. And then I closed the school 
because I went back to college and I think I was the only British student in Brazil <laughs> to do veterinary medicine. I don't know, but I think. <laughs> I finished veterinary medicine here in Cuiabá, yeah. stayed another year and then decided, enough, I've been here 16 years, I'm going back to England. Oh, so that's my great. career. Now I work uh, Very as a interesting. meat inspector. Very interesting. So the second important question I'd like to ask you, where do wildlife biologists work? They can work in various jobs, to be specific. They can work in zoos. British zoos are very much like scientific institutions. They're very sophisticated. They concentrate a lot on endangered species. They concentrate a lot on breeding animals in captivity oh. and releasing them back in their country of origin. Mm. So lots of Brazilian animals that historically have been in Britain are being reintroduced into Brazil and other countries around the world. Where else can a wildlife biologist work? Uh, they can work for the British government. They can also work in pest control. Mm. There are various species of animal in Britain and around the world which are regarded as pests, which can spread disease communicable uh. to man. Wildlife biologists can work doing pest control. Oh, great. Um, they can work in academia, uh, in universities, teaching awesome. about wildlife management. Basically that. Great. So another important question I'd like to know, um, what skills do I need to have to be a wildlife biologist? I think you do need a degree, but it's quite unfair because you need a degree to get through the door to attend an interview. Mm, got it. That's why you need a degree. Once you're in the interview room of the organization where you want to work, then it's just you showing off your personality, oh. being capable of having a conversation, having very open body language, mm. showing a strong, approachable personality, being able to make good eye contact, oh. all Great. these personal qualities. Mm -hmm. So, before you start a job, you need to get good qualifications, like a university degree, a relevant oh. university degree. Nice. But then it's your personality that's important. Oh, great. Got it. As a wildlife biologist, how can I know if I'm being paid fairly, you know? I would look at the magazines and scientific journals and websites that advertise these positions. Mm. And when you've looked at, you need to decide what area of wildlife biology you want to work in. If you want to work with birds of prey or in pest control, or in a zoo. You need to look at lots of advertisements in the printed press, in newspapers, in magazines, and they will give job, ad they will present job advertisements that quote a salary. Mm. And you will get an idea of the entry salary for that oh. career. Right. Don't listen to people talking about the salaries that you can expect because they will say we don't talk about salaries you don't go into this job for a salary but you need to earn money to pay the bills uh, as we say yeah so yes don't speak to people who work in that job look at the literature look at the magazines and newspapers that's where you get the information great great and what is the entry level salary for this industry about 20, between 23 and 25,000 pounds a year. 
23 or 25 thousand yeah. a year. And on top of that, if it is a good company, you will get a pension, mm. a company phone, maybe a car. Mm. The company I work in, I've got a phone and a car. Right. And depending on the job, if it's remotely concerned with tourism, mm. you must expect to work antisocial hours. So oh. evenings, weekends. Oh. But otherwise, it's going to be Monday to Friday. Oh. Great. And what speciality can wildlife biologists choose? There is a vast spectrum of specialities. There's a hundred million species of animal in the world. You can specialize in any of them. The more rare the animal, you really need a PhD, a doctorate. If you want to work in pest control, mm -hmm. I think that is the other end of the spectrum. You don't need a degree. You can do a basic course at college and go into pest control. Oh. And please tell me about your passion for studying wildlife. It began when I was in a very early age. Uh, I was brought up in the countryside and where I lived, there was not a, a big city. Uh, there was not the facilities to uh, enjoy entertainment in a big city. No cinemas, no pizzerias, no nothing. Oh. So I was encouraged to go out and watch birds or look at insects or go out at night and look at nocturnal mammals. And that's where my interest came from. Also, I always liked reading. I used to read a lot. I still do. Uh, and that's where my interest came from. Then I began to have exotic animals. I would go to a pet shop, lots of exotic animal pet shops in England. Mm. I would go there, buy snakes, spiders, all this oh. kind of thing. And that's, that's how it happened. Wow, this is awesome. So another question. Um, what kind of animal species do you like to study the most? If we're talking about wildlife, I like to study anything. If we're talking about domestic animals, farm animals, I like to work with pathology. So I like to work with the dead body to identify what killed the animal. Mm. So that's where my veterinary training comes in. If I'm working with wildlife, uh, I like it all, but I've just started to get into hunting, big game hunting. And I like that because although it may seem to some people, hmm, this man is a conservationist, why is he hunting? Well, the best conservationists began as hunters. Mm. And the knowledge and skills, I admire knowledge and I admire skills. And hunters have those skills and that knowledge that I admire. Great, awesome. So another important question. Um, tell me more about the challenges of this profession. The biggest challenge that I found is if you wanted to be a specialist, you need to go to university, you need a PhD. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of study. And I am glad that I've got the qualifications I've got because it gives me a complete spectrum of perspective on the animal industry because I have two degrees in biology and a degree in veterinary medicine. However, if I wanted to become the world's biggest specialist in jaguars or pumas mm. or harpy eagles, I would need a PhD. PhD. And I don't want to invest that amount of time and money for potentially four years studying for a PhD. If the PhD was funded, that's different. And then I would seriously think about it. But if I have to fund it, that would be the biggest challenge I would have to face, and I'm not prepared to do that. So can you give any advice for vets or biologists or people interested in wildlife? Gosh, let me get my ideas into order. So, 
you have to have a passion for what you want to work on. I think it's easiest if I choose an animal to concentrate on to answer this question. Mm. So let's say you want to work with carnivores, animals that eat meat. Mm -hmm. Could be birds of prey, or it could be big exotic cats, like a jaguar. Mm -hmm. um, you need to decide that you're going to become an expert. You do that by reading everything you possibly can on jaguars. You go to university, you get a degree in biology. Mm -hmm. You do a master's degree and you do a PhD if you can. You go to places, zoos, refuges, sanctuaries to get experience working with jaguars. Mm -hmm. You go to conferences in Brasilia or Curitiba or uh, Manaus or Panama or Guatemala or Mexico, wherever they have jaguars. You go to all the conferences around the world mm -hmm. and you meet people and you meet specialists who work with jaguars nice. and you become known. You read everything, you join the clubs, you attend the conferences and that's how you eventually get a job working in your chosen area, for example, Jaguars. Wow, such a great interview, Sir John. Thank you so much. I learned a lot and I know our subscribers as well. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I know that you have a YouTube channel, right? Yes. Yeah. So how can my subscribers follow you there and watch your videos in English as well? Very simple. The name of the channel is The Practical Animal. Yeah. I interview people every week in English who work with animals. They could be wildlife conservationists, they could be livestock farmers, they could be professors of conservation biology. And of course, in England, being a professor is slightly different from the American English for professor because in England, if you are a professor, you are the head of the university department. And you've usually published a lot of papers, a lot of books. So every week I ask my guests, what does it take to work with the animal with which you work? So if it's a conservation biologist no. who works with jaguars, then I will ask the person, what skills do you need? What personal qualities do you need awesome. to work with Jaguars? So anybody wanting to follow that profession, working with Brazilian Jaguars, or let's face it, Jaguars in any other area of their distribution and status, so up to Mexico even, people can watch the videos, watch the interviews, really nice. and learn the skills needed. Can you repeat the name? Yes. The name of the channel is The Practical Animal. The Practical Animal. Yes. Great. Thank you so much again once, once more. See you around. Thank you, Jackson.